In terms of society, are any of you the children of immigrants? Okay. You have no limits today as to what you can aspire to do with your lives. And I would like to point out that we now have a president who maybe 50 or 60 years ago people would have said it will never happen. And that represents a tremendous move in, society, in our society, certainly, for people to get ahead on their own merits, a meritocracy. That did not exist in Europe in the 16 and 1700s. You could be very bright, you could be very capable, but if you were lowly born, if your parents were servants, you could not really aspire to much more than being a servant. And that's what I mean when I say rigid social stratification. So in, in Europe at this time, the time of Mozart in the 1700s, uh, the aristocracy, the nobles, and the high leaders of the church, the cardinals and the bishops, were at the top of society. They were the beginnings of a middle class, a bourgeoisie, and then you had your large masses of people who were servants, who were peasants, and in some parts of Europe were serfs. Serfs were people who were bound to the land and really had very few rights. Um, another right that absolute rulers had was the right of censorship. They could prohibit the printing and dissemination of information which they thought was dangerous to them. I know you've studied the Reformation. This is correct? Yes. Aha. What technological event enabled Martin Luther to spread his ideas? Printing. Right. Very good. Printing press. <laughs> I like that. Okay, uh, so censorship was particularly burdensome in France. And it, uh, this is the era into which Pierre Beaumarchais is born. Beaumarchais was a French playwright. And in the 1700s, he wrote two plays dealing with the same set of people, same set of characters. Uh, the first play is The Barber of Seville. And the second play is The Marriage of Figaro. Mozart took the second play, The Marriage of Figaro, and Mozart was born in the middle of the 1700s in Salzburg, which was a principality within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So Mozart's native language was German, because that's what they speak in Austria. And Beaumarchais' native language was French, because that's what he spoke in France, and he wrote in French. And um, Mozart and Beaumarchais co collaborate, if you will, on this wonderful opera. Uh, Louis XVI the, the banned the marriage of Figaro. His wife, Marie Antoinette, had read it, and she liked it, and it took her three years of begging Louis to allow the marriage of Figaro to be printed in France. Now, what was so dangerous about this play that Louis didn't like it? It's a satire. What's a satire? It's criticism, but it's criticism in a comical way. It pokes fun. And the marriage of Figaro is a satire on the habits of the nobility. Finally, in 1784, Louis permitted the printing of the marriage of Figaro, and a few years later, um, Mozart writes the opera. When does the French Revolution take place? 1789, only five years later. So now think of that, five years is not a long time between the publication of this very, very satirical play that pokes fun at the nobility and the French Revolution is just a small period of five years. So Louis may have known he was sitting on a very unstable society that was no longer going to last. Um, if you have trouble...